You know, I wasn't going for vampire with this. I was going for pirate. I was going for crew. Now I'm just a Grisha post Judah Perem. It's not the look I wanted. <laughs> I'm Christine, welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Six of Crows, Six, Six of Crows. You guys, Six of Crows were so good. We're so good. If you don't know, we've been working with Macmillan and Six of Crows is October. Book of the month. This book be banging. Look at it. I know it's hard to look away from the so not on point eyeliner on my face. Just for a second, stray your eyes to the pages. <gasps> They're black. Like Kaz's soul. Kaz is a character. For, for Six of Crows! Six of Crows is by Lee Bardugo. It takes place in the Grisha world where her other series takes place, Shadow and Bone. But it is a separate story. You don't have to have read the Shadow and Bone series to read Six of Crows. As proven by the fact that I've read Six of Crows now and haven't read the Grisha trilogy yet. And I love Six of Crows. Whoa! Whoa! Look at it, the red. I'm digging the color scheme. So what, you ask, is this Six of Crows nonsense about? Six of Crows is a heist novel. You get a crew together, you're trying to steal something, to break into a place, and it's all guarded and hard to get into. I don't know how much you want to know about it, really. It's cool to go into it without knowing anything. If you want to know something, though, here's something. We live in this world where there are people called Grishas who have magical abilities. In some countries, they're hunted like witches. In some countries, they're revered and respected. And in some countries, they're often indentured servants, blah blah blah. This drug has come to light that enhances Grisha's abilities, but the drug is so addictive that it eventually kills them. It's basically like heroin for Grisha. It looks like I'm crying tears of darkness. So like I said, I loved Six of Crows. I actually listened to most of it via audiobook because I've been pretty busy these past few weeks. The audiobook is fantastic! It's so good. If you're looking for a good audiobook, dude, the acting, the voice acting, I, mm, it was so good. Especially the women narrators, because it switches back and forth between men and women. They were so good. If you're interested, I'm actually an Audible affiliate. There's a link down in the description, and if you use my link, you get a free audiobook, which is super cool. I look like I came out of the pages. That's how pale I am right now. That's how pale. I am. The characters that Lee has brought to life in this book are fantastic. They're really fleshed out. They all have really interesting backstories. I think that's my favorite part of this book, actually. The heist was fun and intense and crazy, but what I liked the most were the characters and their interactions and the way we learned about them. I found the world that they live in to be super interesting. It just made me want to read the Grisha trilogy more than I did before. The whole thing had a very Pirates of the Caribbean feel, hence the pirate look I was going for and failed to acquire. That's all I'm gonna say ladies and gents so if you haven't read it yet you should leave now go read it then come back and we could discuss it together in all its glory bye for now people who haven't read the book bye leave Okie dokie. As I've gathered through reading and through listening to the audiobook, Rothka is where the Grisha trilogy takes place. Grishas can live freely. Is it like a Grisha country? I'm not sure. I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more about Rothka. Before I go into any story though, let's just take a second. Lee Bardugo and the things she names things. Ooh, ooh, look, look, it's a map of the ice court. The ice court, I think, is the simplest name that anything is named in the entire story. So like I said, I listened to the audiobook for about three quarters of the book and then I just started reading because the audiobook wasn't fast enough for me. That first chapter was so jarring. Seeing the names I've been hearing spelled out in front of me in ways that I would never have meant. Yul Bayor de Boer Blablor. Uh, the guy we're trying to find, Yul Bayor Blablor Blablor Blop. Yul Bayor Blop. What kind of name is Pekka? Anej, is that spelled I-N-N-E-G, Jedge? Or A-N-N-E-S, Jedge? Matthias. It looks like Matthias. And we have Jasper. The whole time I'm thinking Jasper, like Twilight, is spelled Jasper. Don't get me started on the witch hunter country, Ferda. F-J-E-R-D-A. There's nothing I hate more than a silent J. Why? Why you exist? Shu Han, is that how you say Shu Han? Shu Han, I don't know much about Shu Han, except for that's where the scientist came from. You'll buy Bayorior and his son Kawile. Is that his name? Everything is hard. They're from Ketterdam and Kerch is the city and they live in the barrel. Moving on. Let's talk about Kaz. Kaz's story is heartbreaking. The whole ordeal with Jordy waking up next to his dead corpse in a pile of dead corpses and being dumped into the river with a pile of corpses. My god. You can't help but sit back and be like, I'm not surprised he is what it is today. You know, I'm surprised he's not worse than he is. I'm proud of Kaz. I'm proud of what he's become. The first opening chapter where we get to know Kaz through Anej's eyes as they meet the black fingers 
the black toes, the black things. Was brilliant. I literally could not believe how young he was when we found out his actual age. He's Tony Soprano in a 17 year old's body. He's a genius. He's a 17 year old genius mob boss. The hardest thing for me to believe in this book were the ages of the characters. They're all 16, 17. Inej is 16. She just turned 16. Nina is 16. Everyone is so scarily young. And they're so scarily wise for their years. And they have been forced to grow up quickly being in this world in the barrel. And being part of the it's still amazing to watch Kaz's brain work. I'm always impressed. That opening scene is one of my favorite scenes. Mm. I love Anej. I am all aboard the Kanej ship since that first Anej chapter when she was looking at Kaz. Is cute the right word to describe Kaz's feelings for Anej? I loved hearing him admit to himself that he wants to be with her. The sequel to Six of Crows is scheduled to come out next fall. We're gonna have to see Kaz's walls come crumbling down and down, down. So Anej can come in. Anej, I thought she was a Grisha for the first few chapters of the book. I I was confused when they didn't refer to her as a Grisha. She's just the Wraith. The Wraith is just a nickname for her abilities. Like, she's just that good. She doesn't have any magical powers. She's just out of this world talented. I guess her family was part of a circus or something in Rothka, and she was taken away by slave traders. Poor Ned, over and over again, I feel like it's the short end of the stick. First she gets stabbed and almost dies, then she's stuck climbing the incinerator shaft. When she was doing that, my nerves, man, her shoes were like melting, and she said she was gonna give up, and I was like, no, Nish, you can't give up, you're my favorite character. And then she's just taken away at the end because Kaz has feelings for her. He's not used to having a vulnerable spot, so he didn't know how to prepare for that. Then we got Nina, who I also love. She's sassy and she just speaks her mind. And she's a heart bender, a heart blind bula. She's a Grisha Corpolacola. Corpal she controls the body. Her specialty is taking the body apart, not sewing it back together. It's very interesting how that's one of the major divides in that group of Grisha. So she has this connection to Matthias, Matthias, who was a Druskala from the Grisha witch hunting land. And I loved hearing their backstory. They have this love-hate relationship because he's been raised to hate Grisha, to think that they're less than human. And he gets sent to Hellgate, which in my mind is Grisha Azkaban. Every fantasy series has their Azkaban and Hellgate is Ketterdams. Our first work of business is to break him out of there because he knows the ice core that we have to break into to get the scientists, to get the money, to win the heist. It's complicated. Here I am thinking Matthias is gonna be older. He's gonna be in his 20s. 18. I love that by the end of the book, Matthias had come to his senses and realized he was brainwashed by his country. They were in the wrong, not Nina. That first chapter with him looking at Nina and being like, I'm gonna kill her the first second I get. I was super convinced and scared by him. You know, I thought maybe he'd come around eventually, but I thought we were gonna have to fend off some death attempts. And when Nina got locked in that cell in the ice court in that scary laboratory where they experiment on the Grisha, <laughs> My god, I gasped like 50 times. And then Matthias showed up and I was like, this has to be a double cross. This has to be part of the plan. Thank god it was. I did not want to see Nina eat the Juniper M. Of course she ends up doing it anyway. She ends up having to do it for the greater good. She better be okay. She better be okay. We don't hear from her again after that. But we see her struggling and then we see her all bony in that last chapter from Pekka Rollins' point of view. I mean, I can only assume that she's still waning off the drug. She's gonna get better and she didn't have another dose. She best not have had another dose. Then we have Jesper. And how can you not love Jesper? It sounds like I just love everyone. There are a lot of good characters. I, like I said, I really enjoyed the characters. Jesper is a sweetheart. I love when there are those little moments of banter between the crew. When they were talking about ghosts, each of their ghosts would come back to mess with each other's ghosts. And then Matthias is like, my ghost does not associate with your ghost. Kaz, in a lot of ways, remind me of Jace from The Mortal Instruments. I mean, Kaz feels darker, more messed up. I found it really fun, difficult, but really fun trying to picture the ice core to look like a giant cake. I'm particularly interested in why exactly the ice court was designed so frigidly. Why is it such a secure fortress in comparison to other courts? See, I don't know if this is something that they're just known for or something that is there for a reason. Then we have Wyland, token hostage of the Six of Crows crew, who surprisingly really grew on me. At first he was kind of just the runt of the pack, the high schooler that's trailing along with the 
people who are high school age or one year older than him. <laughs> I really enjoyed his sense of humor, the banter between him and Jasper, and then at the end we learned about how his dad is a complete and utter asshole. My heart went out to that kid. That scene in the beginning where they were like, cut off the boy's thumb, and Anya was like, wait, and everyone just waited forever until they died. <sighs> that kid who could evaporate through walls? <gasps> We should have known right off the bat when we met Van Neck that he was a little shit because he had his Grisha on Judah Perem. Oh my god, Jasper is a fabricator. I am really surprised that we didn't catch on to that sooner. I don't know if there was just no foreshadowing or if I just didn't pick up on it. I did pick up on the fact that he definitely was the one that leaked the fact that they were leaving to Pekka Rollins. I was so set on the idea because he was so concerned about Inej. Inej can't die because of this. Inej can't die because of this. And apparently he didn't realize he was the one that gave them up. I'm still not completely clear on what fabricators can do in the extent of their abilities. I realize that they can create things, but to what extent? It seems like they need to have the tools in front of them and then they can use their abilities to create cool things. I want to learn more about them. That secret bridge that Matthias led himself and Kaz across that you had to walk one foot underwater to walk on? I'm honestly super surprised that hypothermia wasn't a thing that anyone had to deal with. I know we've got Nina there and I'm sure she could take care of any of that, but I don't know. They were out in the cold for a while. I really enjoyed the banter between Kaz and Matthias. All this to be a witch hunter? The dregs need a better initiation. This is only part of Rinkala. Yeah, I know. Then a tree tells you the secret handshake. I feel sorry for you, Brecker. There's nothing sacred in your life. I love the scene where Matthias and Nina and that other kid blow up the lab. They come out and they're surrounded. And then all of a sudden, Kaz Brecker comes out and starts the day and then he explodes the tree and they dive into the water and they're like I can't breathe and they have those breathy things <gasps> epic escape and then Van Eck double crosses them and uh an edge is taken what do I think is gonna happen in book two I think Kaz and an edge have to happen Kanej Anas and our crew is gonna obviously work together to pull up another heist I hope Kaz can find peace I don't know if it's just gonna be a two book duology or a series we saw Matias find peace within himself him and Nina are gonna be good as long as Nina doesn't get hooked on Judah Perem I really hope that doesn't happen I think it's a viable plot option to have it go down that road and we have to find a cure but I personally feel that she's strong enough to beat that drop Pekka Rollins has to die you know that moment where Kaz had a mini panic attack and fainted when he opened up the prisoner cart. I don't know what you thought was happening there, but for a second I thought Jordy was one of the prisoners that he saw in there and he wasn't actually dead and <gasps> faint. But now I'm thinking it was probably just something with his hands that he was touching skin and he had taken off his gloves because prisoners weren't wearing gloves. Ooh, we have to see the menagerie lady maybe die. Burn down the menagerie. I hate that woman. Van Neck has to die, obviously. We want our 30 million Kruga and Kruga is spelt like Krug. Krugi. 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 It's not like Krugi. I'm only saying Kruga because I've heard the audiobook person say it so many times. I want that money for them. They need to live happily ever after. Oh, I want to see Anish find her parents and Kaz to leave with her. Kaz doesn't have to stay and get their damn. I want him to get out of there and have like a happy ever after life. I don't know if anyone's gonna die because I don't know Lee Bardugo's style when it comes to death. I was really afraid that Matias was gonna die for half a second when he got shot in the chest. And then Nina was like, whip. The first two chapters, we read from the point of view of that guy, Joust. I thought he was going to be one of our leading guys. I thought he was going to be part of the heist. And he was just there really to show us Judah Perret. Crazy way to open the book. I'd love to hear your Six of Crows thoughts, solid theories of what you think is going to go down in the next book. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at May. Same on Instagram. All my other links are in the description. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye! Stop it. Oh my god, it can't stop it.